Starting with this example, we will investigate the numerical calculation capability of Excel. Numerical calculation, in my opinion, is basically set up a relatively simple mathematic procedure and then repeat that mathematic procedure for a large number of times. And that's where machines exceed human beings because machines are capable of handling large amount of calculations within short period of time. So this is a very typical example. Uh, we're going to calculate the total investment after um, the money has been compounded at a fixed interest rate for a certain amount of years. In pre-calculus, you probably have learned that there's a formula for that, and it involves exponential function. But we're not going to use that because, again, we are going to compare numerical calculation to the analytical calculation that you have learned in math class. Therefore, we're going to set up a simple calculation in Excel, but we are going to repeat it for a large amount of times. So over here, I have set up a small region. I have put notes to indicate what these parameters are. And these spaces are highlighted in orange. This is where I am going to put my input and also doing some calculation relating to my input. And this is my final answer. So I have an initial principle of $10,000. Okay, I have already selected the format of using the dollar sign. If it's not showing it, you can always change it from this drop down menu. The APR, the annual percentage rate, is 4.5%. Okay. Um, the total term in this example is 18 years. And because the money is compounded monthly, that means that for a year, the money is going to be compounded 12 times because there are 12 months in the year. Now, these are intermediate calculations. So let me actually change the color to distinguish them from our inputs. So periodic interest rate. If the annual interest rate is 4.5%, therefore, for every month, the interest rate is simply this number right here divided by this number, which means that if you want to, you can change it into a percentage format. But this is the interest rate for every month. Total compounding times. If we compound the money 12 times a year for 18 years, this number equals to 18 multiplied by 12. That's 216 times. Currently, because we're not going to use the formula directly, we don't know the future total value yet. So we're going to set up a separate region to do that calculation. Now we have set up this little area over here to do our numerical calculation. And let me explain. This is going to be our, our column of compounding numbers. Remember, overall, we have to compound the money for 216 times. Therefore, we will start with compounding number 1, 2, 3, etc., all the way to 216. Now, there's an easy way to do that, if you remember, just by drag. Dragging this little handle, it automatically fills in our numbers. Here, the value before compounding. That's going to be our $10,000 before anything that has happened to our money. That's our principal investment. We can simply put in this $10,000 here. However, if that's the case, if we change this investment, total investment money to say 900, it doesn't affect our calculation. We don't want that. Remember, we always want to reuse our uh, files so we can do calculation for some different future applications. Therefore, we simply want this to equal to this number right here. And let's fix it by giving the absolute address instead of the relative address. So that's the total value before compounding even once for the interest. Now, on this money, 
the interest that we're going to earn during one month. Again, not one year, but one month, because our money is compounded every month. This is going to be this right here multiplied by this interest rate right here. Again, we want this right here to be a fixed address. So during the first month on our $10,000, we have earned $37.5 interest. Again, this L2 cell does not need to be an absolute address. Actually, it should not be because we are going to copy and paste the formula for the rest of the compounding numbers. But this number right here needs to be in absolute position because this is the constant value of the periodic interest rate we're going to use throughout our calculation. And then the value after compounding simply equals to before plus interest. So by the end of the first month, this is the total number we will have. Well, as you can see, this step right here involves very simple arithmetics. We have an initial value, multiply that by a constant monthly interest rate that gives us the interest we earn in one month. And then our total money equals to the initial value plus the interest. And now we're moving on to the second time of compounding. And this value simply equals to this one right here. And for these two, we can simply copy and paste the formula because the calculation is the same. So before the second time of compounding, this is the total money we have. And we're going to earn interest on all of that. Therefore, the interest equals to this value multiplied by the same constant periodic interest rate. And then after compounding, this is going to be the new final value after twi two times of compounding. And then we can simply copy and paste the calculation for the rest of our table. And this value right here is what we're looking for. This is kind of lower in our table. It's not very convenient to look at this number. Therefore, let's remember its address is N217. And let's put it over here. So this equals to N217. So now we have generated a table in Excel that's able to calculate the total investment value um, based on the pr provided input information. We can change this to, for example, $3,000, change the interest rate to, say, 2.3%. And as you can see, the final answer changes accordingly. You cannot really change these uh, because these are linked to the total number of compounding times, which is linked to this column right here. So if you do want to change the term or how many times per year you're compounding your, your number, don't forget to change this column accordingly as well. Now, if you don't believe we have got the right answer, this is the formula that I told you about. You can do the calculation accordingly. So according to this formula, A equals to the principal value multiplied by 1 plus your annual interest rate divided by how many times you're compounding it raised to the power of N times T. Let's put it in a dollar sign. As you can see, these two are exactly the same answers. So you might wonder, in that case, why do I need this method? I can use the formula directly. Well, what if the formula is not available to you? And also, using this example, we are actually learning a different way of thinking, different way of doing calculation. We are using the software, using the machine to do something that human cannot do. We set up very simple, straightforward calculation, very easy to explain, a lot more easier to explain than an exp exponential function. And all we're doing is to repeat the same calculation for, in this case, 200 times. And you can repeat this calculation for 2,000 times, 20,000 times if you want. And the machine is going to be able to handle it. So this is an alternative way 
of solving mathematics or other kind of application problems.